Hi, welcome to Rekindle XM, where we talk about stress, burnout, and effective ways to recover from the ashes of burnout and rekindle our fire. I'm your host, Brian, and I'm joined today by my beautiful wife, Michelle, and the lovely Masha. I had to get some bonus points in there in case I do something wrong. <laughs> First of all, today, we'd have excellent news about our book that will be coming out this year. Michelle, why don't you give us an update? Yes, we do have exciting news. We have been in conversation with a publisher and waiting for their final decision. And we have received that. Our application has been accepted. We are going to be able to get our book published. We are so excited. And we're also realizing there's going to be about a nine-month road ahead of us. So we will shortly be in full editing mode and back and forth with the publisher, but super excited to share our book. The title may change, but as of right now, the title is From Flamed Out to On Fire, Rekindle. Yay! So that means that by my birthday this fall, we're going to be holding a book, and that is my birthday wish. Because it's all about her birthday, people. It's all about her birthday. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good wish to have. I usually don't have birthday wishes, but this is a first birthday wish I've had as an adult. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll keep everybody updated on progress. Well, Michelle and I went for a walk around the RV resort that we're at yesterday, immersing ourselves in nature and trying to figure out the disc golf course that they have as part of the resort. There's no map to this disc golf course and all of the tee boxes just give you the number and the the tee hole and the the par for the hole so it's a true boondoggling course because you have no idea where to throw your frisbee from each tee box but anyway this was a great opportunity for michelle and i to relieve some stress through a little exercise but i have to tell you Exercise is normally a four-letter word for me. <laughs> Michelle and Masha, what are your thoughts? Is exercise always good for you? Does it always relieve your stress? I think over the years, my mindset about the word exercise has changed. As a young adult in my 20s, I never thought about, I got to go exercise. It was, I got to go to the gym. And at that time, the word gym used to excite me because at the gym, it wasn't just go and lift some weights, hit the treadmill and be done. I never liked that. Like being inside a facility and doing physical activity uh, has always been just like a, it brought mental fatigue to me because I like to exercise outdoors. So when I did need the exercise to relieve stress and, and energy for that specific reason, I would only bank 10 minutes to go to the gym because I enjoy outside. I would go in, hit the treadmill, run a mile and get back in the car and go home. And I could do that every day. And I was in top shape of my life. I really enjoyed it. It did not take any mental real estate. It just get in, get out, be done. And that's it. As an adult, more mature adult, if I think about going to the gym, I get instantly like nauseous thinking about it. I'm like, huh. Okay, well, if you tell me, let's go to like a Zumba class or a yoga class, it's a form of exercise too, but it's a different association for me and I get excited about it. And yes, I love it. It gets the stress tension released and I'm on my way. But if you tell me, what my daughter tells me, mom, let's go to the gym. I'm like, whoa, what is wrong with that request? She loves going to the gym. She loves exercising. But in order for me to get to the gym, it's a huge effort. Once I get there, I'm okay. I can do it. It's getting there. That's the problem for me. Okay. So she's up in the air, waffling quite a bit. Michelle, <laughs> what's your take? No, it's definitely not a four-letter word for me. Um, in my late 20s, early 30s, I would get up at like 10 minutes till five in the morning, roll out of bed, get my workout clothes on, go to the gym, and take a class from 5.30 to 6.30. And I actually loved it because it was the same people. And, you know, 5.30 in the morning, nobody puts on makeup. Nobody cares what they look like. So it was just a fun community of, of working out. And then in my evening hours, I would often just take off on my bike for two to three hours. And, you know, my mom was just like, well, 
you know, as long as you're safe, go, go do your thing. And um, that wasn't unusual at all. I played ultimate Frisbee with friends. I hiked, I biked. Um, I loved all of it. However, over time, as my career started picking up steam and of course I married you and life changed because we had got a house and then you get your pets, um, you know, life just gets busier. So I found that I just didn't have as much time for it. And over the course of 15 years, I went from very, very active to, okay, now I'd love to walk. So I don't do that strenuous exercise, but I still love to walk. And in fact, that walk you talked about yesterday, I'm pretty sure there was some um, persuasion on my part to get you to come with me. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to do something else on that walk than what you wanted to do. Hmm, so true. So, uh, what about the audience? Is exercise a four-letter word to you? Let us know, and be sure to like and subscribe or follow our channel while you're doing it. So there is an article at stress.org called "Opinion: When Exercise Isn't Stress Relief." And it talks about people who don't have time to exercise and are forcing exercise and how forcing exercise may cause stress instead of relieving it. Um, forcing yourself to exercise in a way that you don't enjoy was one of the things they brought up in the article. And rigid routines may work counteractively causing more stress. So if you do enjoy exercise, but you're on a really rigid routine and you're already kind of stressed out, that rigid routine can potentially cause stress for you. Uh, what are your guys' opinion on that article? You know, I think there's other research too that points towards the importance of joy for stress relief. So it doesn't surprise me that people who don't enjoy exercise, that for them that can actually cause some stress. But I don't think the article was saying that people don't enjoy exercise. They're just saying some of it was people don't enjoy exercise, but other parts of it was they're at a point where the type of exercise that they're enjoying is too rigid. And so then it becomes not stress relieving, but adding to the stress. Uh, you know, it's it's interesting because I, I could I could relate if. In the past, I got excited about running my mile and be done. I was like, oh my goodness, that's all I need. Perfect. But thinking about now going to the gym and spending 10 minutes on a treadmill, first of all, I won't make it a mile. Second of all, I won't be able to walk the next day because my knees are not structured for jogging, as it turns out. And that explains why I've had issues in the past and I just gave up jogging. There's also an interesting uh, observation that some of the healthiest people in the world, tip top athletes that run marathons. After a marathon, some of the people uh, that we've observed over the last couple of decades, they don't live long. They drop dead after the run a marathon. We're like, whoa, what the heck? You are in tip top shape of your life. You run this marathon, it's your life dream, and then you drop dead. I'm like, well, that gives me an excuse not to run a marathon because I know I will drop dead. So, <laughs> but I think that's a good observation to what is the right form of physical activity for you at this time that is not too strenuous on your body, that gives you the benefit that you need, and you can achieve the outcomes that you want. And sometimes it's not the gym. Right. And the article does go into that, but it also talks about um, they were referencing college students who are so busy. But I think that works for people that are working too much, too, that when you're working a lot and you're overstressed, trying to think about or find time to exercise actually may not help you relieve the stress. And you may want to find different avenues to help you relieve that stress that doesn't involve exercise specifically aerobic or anaerobic exercise which is you know heavier heavy exercise you know my favorite form of cardio when i'm extremely stressed overworked and overwhelmed it gets the blood pressure up it clears out your arteries it achieves the same result as as literally running outside hot baths i can soak in them for hours <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that's interesting. And I've seen that research as well, that they're saying that, um, I think, what is it, 30 minutes? I don't remember the exact amount of time, but like 30 minutes in a hot tub or a hot bath is equivalent to exercise. I opt so. in. I'm there every night. Mm. <laughs> so everybody get your bath salts and let's go. <laughs> and aroma well, we've therapy. that for years, right? <laughs> a hot, relaxing bath. Um, you know, it's interesting, though, going back to the other point about what type of exercise is right for you and what do you enjoy. I think that is the key. And sometimes we tend to think of it only exercise in this narrow lane of, oh, I have to have a high heart rate. I have to be working really hard. I have to be, you know, sweating. But what if it's not, what if that's not required for stress management? What if really any form of physical movement, maybe it's just stretching. You know, what if we thought about it in a different context instead of working out to lose weight, to build muscle, to be fit? What about if we thought about just moving to relieve stress? I think that's an excellent observation. I think movement is is it. When after my health crisis, my physical activity routine became my you know physical therapy, which includes a lot of stretching and a lot of movement um, and absolutely no increase in heart rate. So and that brings you know, you still kind of think like, oh, I have to get on my mat and oh, I have to stretch my lower back because it hurts. Oh, I have to do this. Oh, I have to do that. It's that mental <laughs> mental uh, strains that hold you from getting there. But once I get there, it's, oh my goodness, like why was I waiting all day to get here? I need to start off my day with that. But I think we also need to consider the lifestyles and the work styles of our uh, fellow listeners is if you have an active work environment where you're constantly moving, maybe a form of activity that requires a lot of movement isn't it for you. Maybe sitting still and meditating and calming down the chaos that you faced would be most beneficial and adding some stretching to that and maybe some still poses uh, that would you know help you with certain areas that you may be struggling with. So I think taking a look at a lifestyle and deciding what is the right type of physical activity or physical inactivity, the best for you, because I think it's both. That's where we get the most benefit from that mentally and physically. Right. I mean, if there's times where you can't exercise, you know, walking or heavy exercise or whatever, there are some other ways to help you relieve that stress. And the article suggests three things, which is writing, social interaction, or cooking. To some, cooking may not be a stress reliever, though. It depends on how bad you are. <laughs> well, I think it points back to this individualized toolbox of coping methods. You need to know what works for you. And almost every article out there will tell you, oh, if you're stressed, you need to get some physical activity. You need exercise. But again, what is the best for you. And, and Masha, I like the fact that you give us an example of ways to be physically moving without even raising your heart rate. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's tons. I've learned so much. One of my favorite form of physical therapy, I mean, I've got so many torture devices, you just pick one and at the end of the day, like <laughs> it did what it needed to do. Um, I do like there is a, uh, if you, you can do this with a tennis ball, there's a tennis ball, you can put two tennis balls in a sock, or you can get a ball that's already attached like that. And you just roll it either uh, uh, right among your spine, up um, against the wall, to begin with, or on the floor, because that's more of a deep tissue. I started off on the wall, and what it does, it physically releases tension in those stubborn areas. I happen to have problems in my upper and lower back, um, and that, oh my goodness, I feel the release of that tension. I just focus on that area. I bring in breathing into my routine, and now I'm on the mat using those uh, that device and the miracles that I've seen just with releasing tension, I wish I would have started earlier. I don't need to go run a mile to release tension. I just need my little <laughs> devices to to do it for me. Masha, you just made me remember uh, one of the analysts that we worked with, she had these hand exercise um, devices that she would take with her everywhere. Everywhere she went, she was always like squeezing or, um, 
you know, playing with these and I'm like, oh, that's actually a great example of just something you can do simply and easily, even when you're at work. Yeah, and I think it's also for uh, for those minds, it helps uh, relieve stress and tension if you're in an environment. I also remember when she didn't have them, she fell asleep. <laughs> So <laughs> it could be just to keep her awake or really tension. I, I do not have a conclusion on that one, but that's an interesting observation. All right. Well, I'm going to continue on about how stress or exercise is a four letter word. Don't call it exercise. So I found this. <laughs> okay. Anyway. An interesting bad story. An interestingly bad study from the New York Times called When Exercise Stresses You Out. This was written in 2013, so it was 10 years ago or more. But it was a study conducted by the Center of Neuroscience in the University of Colorado, Boulder, because we don't want to claim Denver on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Go Denver. <laughs> The emotional effects of forced exercise versus voluntary exercise on anxiety and emotional resilience is what the study was about. And that sounds good, right? Well, this study involved adult rats who were placed in four categories. There were the ones that could get on their exercise wheel and run as much as they want for as long as they want and do whatever they want. They were in complete control of what they wanted to do. But then they brought in with the study a group of rats that were forced to exercise in the same way that the voluntary rats got to exercise. So they were on a routine where they were randomly exercised and for the same lengths of time and all of this other stuff. But then they had did a third group where they were placed on a treadmill and they had no choice but to exercise at a steady pace and they couldn't stop or start. It just continually kept going. And then the last group was sedentary. They didn't um, get to do any type of exercise. So then the next day they put the rats in an unfamiliar maze-like cage designed to determine their level of anxiety and confidence. And supposedly if the rats went into a dark corner and hid, then they were full of anxiety and stress. But if they went into lighted areas and went around the maze and they were confident and stress-free. Um, the rats who that were forced to either completely run on the treadmill the whole time or sedentary all went and found a dark place to hide where the other two groups, the ones that did more along their normal routines, moved around with confidence and they didn't show any anxiety. Well, the conclusion to the exercise is Exercise is good for you and it relieves stress. The study said they couldn't understand why the forced treadmill rats showed sign of anxiety, at least in the rats. Even forced <laughs> exercise is good, is what they said. So, do you think this is a valid study? I just want to go what hide from listening say? to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So, valid is, is a different question then if their conclusions are correct. I think it's an interesting study, but you know, it's it's rats. So you can't ask them what they're thinking. You can't actually ask them what they're feeling. So you're using a proxy of, okay, if they go hide in a dark corner, then they're okay. anxious. If they Here don't, comes you know. the scientist. Yeah, yep. <laughs> all, yep. I'm, all I'm saying is, I think it's interesting and it's probably gonna spawn a whole bunch of other studies. My real question is, um, is somebody doing this in humans, which I think they are starting to, because then you can actually ask people about what they feel. I think this well, is an excellent- I would have to say. Let me interrupt. I think this is an excellent point to pause for a second and ask our listeners, what do you think is forced exercise good for you or bad for you? Please use comments below. All I know is I can feel with the rats on the treadmill that are nonstop are feeling, and I would go hide in a corner too, because that would be <laughs> stressful. So the fact that this, the scientists couldn't understand why the rats that were had to exercise the whole time were stressed, it's like, really? You can't put those that two and two together? 
<laughs> this reminds me of a, a funny video reel I've seen. Uh, it's pretty consistent. Just, you, you know, you have those pets that are overweight and they put them on the forest exercise program. They have a moving treadmill and they're enclosed in a kind of glass box just to keep them moving. So the ground's constantly moving underneath them. So these dogs are resilient. They found a way to stand around in the corner and just have one paw that just goes on the treadmill. <laughs> Time. And I was like, whoa, this is, this is genius. There was another, there's a dog, a really overweight dog, and it couldn't walk. Like it was at a point where it just could not even walk on a treadmill. So they filled it up with water and it was uh, the ground moving underwater. So the dog figured out how to float. I'm like, oh my goodness, this is resilient, <laughs> smart dog. So when you put intelligent species in in a very undesired situation, I think we can get creative for solutions if we don't want to do what is put before us. Oh yeah, Brian can come up with the most creative excuses why he doesn't want to go for that walk. Am I right? I don't need a creative excuse. <laughs> just I just know. say no. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's interesting, though, because the two groups of rats, the ones that had total control over their exercise and the ones that were forced to exercise, but in a natural pattern, as you know, the, the ones who did have control, they were both apparently fine with it. But when you force animals or humans to do things they don't want to do for a prolonged period of time with no break, it's just continual well that would stress me out too because think, you don't know when it's going to end you don't know if you're going to get a break at this point it's not stress it is duress at that point yeah. i mean it's it's actively yeah. bringing harm physically and <laughs> mentally imagine if if you're so closed in a room and the floor just starts moving i mean i would have emotional trauma i would need therapy for for forever like you're stuck, you, there's, you have to do this. Why would I want to put myself in that position voluntarily? No, thanks. And even though it's rats, I think it's, it speaks to um, when you're set a regiment of doing something that you enjoy doing or would naturally do, then that does show that it is less stressful. It does help relieve the stress. But if you're doing something that you don't enjoy and you have to keep doing it, you're you're not going to do that. And that exercise becomes a four-letter word. And right. so, it becomes a stress. Yep. Yeah. I agree. You know, it's interesting. They actually have done a Swiss study with people, not rats, and they measured their burnout. So using a very um, popular burnout scale. And then they divided them into groups. One group had to do some kind of exercise at work. I think they were just walking. The other group didn't. And what they found was in the group that was in that exercise, you know, it was kind of forced exercise in the sense that the whole group did it together. So they did kind of have to go peer pressure. They found that their stress and burnout was only relieved. It only went down if they already enjoyed exercise. So the People that were in that group that were kind of forced to exercise, who didn't have a positive mindset on exercise, they, their burnout and their stress wasn't helped. So there's the human corollary. Agree, hundred percent. Now change the name from exercise to a Zumba class, and I'm there. <laughs> uh, no, that's still a four-letter word. <clears throat> hmm. So why is exercise good? And we've kind of alluded to that. But there's another article, I'm just full of articles today, mm. by the uh, Mayo Clinic called Exercise and Stress. Get moving to manage your stress. And it explains the benefit of exercise. So there's four things that by exercising and enjoying it, that can help you. It helps pump up your endorphins. It reduces negative effects of stress. It's meditation and motion. And Michelle talks about that all the time. And it improves your mood. What do you guys think of that? Yes, I think the physiological benefits of exercise are well documented. You know, we, we know that it will lower cortisol in a lot of situations. But again, it's finding what works for you. Um, there's so this topic is actually in our book. 
I did a lot of research on it. And someone also did this analysis of all these different studies with all these different types of exercise. And what they found was there wasn't an association between stress reduction and exercise when you take everything together. So again, it points to that need of finding what works for you. And I think one of the benefits, if you do enjoy movement and you do a walk, whether it's fast-paced work or walk or a slow walk, so it could be work, right? We don't want to bring work into our rest. But to the point of walking and doing that in the nature, there's more benefits than just exercise. So yes, physical movement, it brings, you know, blood flow to areas that need it and oxygenate your uh, muscles and other organs accordingly. But you're outside, you're breathing in fresh air. You are grounding yourself. You are interacting with the nature that we were created in and right and for. And what happens for me, my stress leaves and I get energy from the environment I'm in. And come to find out trees, they help you release that uh, negative energy and they give positive energy. So it's not just about physical movement there for me. It's also about getting refreshed and replenished to get clear, clear air. When I go to the mountains and we do a little hike or just sit and rest and have a cup of coffee or tea, it's insane. I get a headache from having fresh air because we're so not used to having this fresh, crispy, amazing atmosphere around us. We're constantly in pollution, uh, not just noise pollution, yeah, is it but that fresh air, air or is it the altitude? Well, we don't go that high. I don't have altitude sickness. It's just when it's been a while and, and I go, I can breathe easily. And because I get too much oxygen, I feel like I'm getting a headache. So, you know, detox. Mm. De <laughs> We'll so you're talking less for once and enjoying the atmosphere. Yeah. So you're getting all that extra breathing in. No, that too. It's all <laughs> kinds of, it shed all the noise. You know, and that is one of the reasons why walking is one of the best forms of exercise. And you will hear that over and over. And most doctors will recommend that because usually you're walking outside. So to Masha's point, it's not just the physical movement. It's the environment, it's the you know, the blue sky, the water, if there's water, it's the trees, it's, you know, hopefully fresh air, although that may not happen if you're walking in a city environment. But there's so many benefits to bringing all of those elements together to help de-stress. Not sure I found the benefit of walking matching what you're saying. Walking <laughs> is still a four-letter word for me. <laughs> Yeah, but. Brian, Brian, okay, so Brian, but here's another form of exercise that you love, actually a couple, and for guys listening, let us know if you agree. Guys like their motorized vehicles. So if you're out on a four-wheel drive vehicle or even a regular vehicle and you're out driving and you're on a mountain road and, you know, just you're getting out here and there to stretch and walk around, maybe that accomplishes it. We also had jet skis or boats or whatever, and you're putting some effort, physical movement into getting the boat launched, into steering. You know, it, There's always some physical activity along with that. So maybe for stress relief, that's something to consider. Hmm. <laughs> so we've kind of already started talking about how we need to change, change our mindset with the word exercise. How do I change my mindset from it being a four letter word to being something that is helpful and useful? And I think, well, I'm gonna give some background on why I say exercise is a four letter word. Um, growing up on a farm in Kansas, I never exercised to be in shape. Moving around on the farm, doing the things that we had to do was enough exercise that it was work. So I've always related exercise to work. And when you relate exercise to work, it becomes a four letter word. Mm -hmm. So it, it's changing that mindset that one, exercise doesn't always involve running, being in a gym, lifting weights, as Masha had said earlier. It's finding that avenue that 
it brings you enjoyment and gives you that exercise. So when I was younger, I played a lot of racquetball and that was one of my favorite sports. My shoulders quit letting me do that, but I found that that was my good source of exercise and it wasn't a four letter word to me because it was something I really enjoyed doing. As you get older, you know, you can't do things as well as you used to and you have to sometimes give up sports that you used to play. And you just, life comes in, stress happens, you don't exercise as much as you should, and you can let yourself go a little bit. Me as example. But anyway, I now have to start changing my mindset that some of the things that I haven't liked doing, I may need to start thinking in a way that I like doing it. And that mindset is something that has to be worked on. It, it's not organic to me. I have to establish that habit in my mind that I'm enjoying that walk. And as Michelle was saying, even though I was giving her grief about it, the walk out in nature is one of those walks that you can enjoy, depending on the purpose you have in it. Yesterday was a meandering walk. It gave us the exercise we needed we were wanting to check things out and we just kind of took our time. There was no exerted effort or goal to get from a certain amount of miles in or anything like that. And that gave me a good chance to get a decent amount of steps in and it was exercise and it was stressy relieving as well. So what are some other our mindset idea changes that we can think about to help us get over this exercise being a four letter word. So Brian, I think you pointed out one and I want to go back because this is going to be true for a lot of people. If you equate exercise with work, then of course you're not going to find enjoyment, at least when you think about that word. And that's going to be common for a lot of people. And of course, some people work very physical jobs as well. So if you ex if exercise equals work in your mind, then you do need to think about that mindset. So what do you tell yourself about exercise or physical movement? So what are those words you tell yourself internally? Sure, no comment? No, I do. I just thought you were going to respond to that. You don't want to interrupt. No. Uh, but first, I want to go back and, and, and say a little joke I saw yesterday. I totally thought about you when I saw this. And this is a picture of a tractor in the farmland. And there's this farm boy operating it. And then another kid comes up and says, what do you do in your free time? And the farmer boy is like, what do you mean free time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In the summer, that's true. <laughs> Yeah, so I can totally understand the mental fatigue thinking about more work after work and right as and there's tons of examples of what that looks like. But an example of changing mindset is uh, some of my family members when I say, let's go to a hike and they're like, whoa, no, first of all, you have too much energy. That means <laughs> I'm going to be suffering. I'm not going on a hike with you. And it's like a fight, like not going on a hike. But when I change it and the I hike say, is a walk that sucks. Yeah, uphill with like, a, <laughs> I get it. Yeah, but it's an adventure for me. I love hiking. It's sightseeing. It's nature. It's, you know, a form of exercise. I don't call it exercise. Otherwise, I won't do it either. But when I say, let's go explore, and everyone's like, ooh, what are we exploring? And I say, ooh, it's going to be an adventure. Right. And they stuck with a hike and they don't complain as much. It was a hard transition for me when I moved to Denver from Kansas because you can see everywhere, see for miles, and going into the mountains to go hiking, I'm like, why am I doing this? I'm walking for miles, and all I see is trees. I can't see anywhere. I can't see ahead of me. I can't see behind me. I can't see to the left or the right. I'm like, this is pointless. This is stupid. So... I had to grow out of that one to kind of enjoy mountain hikes just by being a flatlander or then coming into the mountains. So yes, everything takes a little bit of mindset adjustment. Mm. 
there is a motivator, and I do have a funny story about my daughter, and she's going to kill me if she listens to this. <laughs> so <laughs> when she was in elementary school, we, as a family, used to go and uh, to uh, do exercise on a track, and we would jog, we would walk, we would, you know, do the form of exercise, and she was a soccer player, so we had to stay active and, and you know, in, in a desired physical shape. So we usually went after work, and during summers, right around that time, that's when mosquitoes come out. So we were walking around the track, and there was already everybody complaining. And I'm just like, come on, we can do this. It's outside. This is great. We're getting oxygen. We're getting workout. And then the mosquitoes show up. Everybody started running, like sprinting. And I was like, oh, that's all you need for motivation is just have mosquitoes run behind you <laughs> so that you get physical activity. Of course, they ran from the from the track to the car. But, you know, it was still a form of motivation. Well, I, I remember her in South Dakota. If there was any type of bug, she was nowhere near. So <laughs> yes. it, it, she hasn't grown out of it. No, not at all. Not at all. I love how you reframed hike to explore. That kind of works with, with Brian and I as well, because you know, being full-time RVers, we want to go around, we want to see things. So we're going to go explore, which means we're going to spend part of the time driving. But Brian knows, to keep me happy, there will be a walk of some sort. But it's, it's all part of exploring. <laughs> Brian, I but think, I do agree. is an excellent rock climber. I mean, when we were in South Dakota and we were doing an exploration on those <laughs> rocks, he was like the first one up there. And I was hesitating. I'm like, I don't know if, if I should. Of course, I did. But I did struggle with my knees on the way back. I was like, I don't know if I can make it off this rock. <laughs> yeah, that that's part of the problem is um, we were at Sylvan Lake is what she's referring to. And it's the, if you've ever watched National Treasure 2, it, it was those rocks where they were up there and he had to stick his hand in the, the rock to open the hole to the next stage of their journey or whatever. And those rocks are flat on top for the most part, but there's some pretty good um, gaps that can make you a little nervous. <laughs> So it's not like I was like really, really rock climbing. She's kind of misleading that just a little. But the exploring thing is a good thing because when I'm going somewhere and I'm just exploring, I don't realize it's a hike and I'm looking around and I'm enjoying my scenery as I'm getting walking in. So, yes, I agree. When we labor at exploring or like meandering, like I said earlier, it's the intentions behind what you're doing and if you're doing it in a way that doesn't bring you enjoyment then it's not going to work for you mm -hmm. i still can't forget that leap from one rock to another i was like i can do this so i leaped and upon <laughs> yeah. landing i pulled my glute <laughs> and the ride back to denver was h-e-l-l -L. that's all i'm gonna say about that you were the only one to do that because michelle and i are old enough to know that that was stupid <laughs> I did it. I did it. And I paid for it for like over a month. It still hurts uh -huh. thinking about it. Yeah, well, you well, are our millennial. You know, we're the we're the old yes. Xers. So. I was going to say, that's the difference <laughs> there between it is. the Xers and the millennials The M word. Right now. I don't associate <laughs> with an M word. <laughs> I'm a hybrid. <laughs> All right. So. As we've been talking about, exercising is an important part of stress reduction, but it's important to find the outlet that is enjoyable to you. And if you haven't done so, please hit that like button, ring the bell, and subscribe for a future podcast. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>